Hey, welcome back to Real Talk. He's Joe, I'm Brad. It's Valentine's week and love is in the air. Oh, baby. How My mom the... always called it VD Day. <laughs> 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 which... <laughs> of course it, she it, did. Which has a whole... You could VD, I mean... Of course she did. Yeah, it's... It's a... <laughs> <laughs> Did that take it on I an angle? I didn't know that's where we were starting yeah, today. So cool. growing up, it was VD Day. Okay, so <laughs> which you don't have that much love and respect for Valentine's Day then. Uh, w yeah, when you think about it as VD Day, <laughs> it's different. It's, it's just different. It just changes it. And maybe it's why it gave, like, I never, I'm never a big fan. I don't know. It was in our prenuptial agreement with my wife that we we're never going to celebrate VD Day. No. <laughs> because when you see it that way, who wants to celebrate that? Right. <laughs> right? Right. So it was like, yeah, we don't, we're not really big Valentine's. When I was a kid, my parents owned a flower store. Whoa. I'm not sure why. I think they were bored. <laughs> they, just they just bought a flower it. store. And, so, you know, that's like the whole family oh had to goodness. work that day. Did you? What did you do? I, the, I delivered flowers. Did you really? Yeah. On your bike? Like on a big wheel? No, like, what? <laughs> like what? Not when I was that young. I was thinking, how old were you when you did this? No, like when I was in high school. Did you really? Yeah. So you just drove around and rang under people's doorbells and gave them roses? Yeah. That's kind of neat. That's a neat experience. It's terrible. Did you, get, did you get tips? No. Really? No, not once, ever. I did that. I would. That was like my summer job in high school, part of high school. At the flower, flower shop. The flower shop. Wow. One time I had to take girl, uh, flowers to a girl that I really liked, but they weren't from me. It was awful. No, you. That no, was true story. Horse manure. True story. Come on. I had to take flowers that were from some other guy to this girl that I liked. And you didn't boycott that and say, "Mom, I'm not doing this." So it was terrible. So. Okay. Did you go Valentine's, to counseling for that? <laughs> Valentine's week, Valentine's Day. It's all about love. Love is in the air. Always. It is. So where does love come from? Uh, God is love. love. And the verse right before that, all love comes from God. So God is the creator of love. He is the ultimate giver of love, right? Yep. Everything yep. that we could say this is love comes from God, connects to God in mm -hmm. some way. Even in our relationships, that is a gift that we could love each other from God. Love is in the air. So does God love everyone? Of course. He does? Yeah. Prove it. Well, what do I have to? Oh, what? I don't Prove know. it. I mean, do you have like I mean, a Bible how, verse for this? I mean, God so loved the world. I mean, like he just, God is, he is love. Yeah. He made us. He sustains us in love. Created us in love. Made us in his image in love. Is sovereign over all things in love. I mean, it, it is in the fiber of, you can't like separate out love from anything he does. Good. I think. Yeah, that's good. And I think your point of, of like John 3, 16, God so loved the world. He yep. shows love for the world. <clears throat> Does, go another step. Does God love everyone the same? Yes. Oh, here we go. Yes, he loves everyone the same? Yeah. He loves his, would you say he loves his people? You're trying to trap me. No, I'm not trying to trap you. Like, let's talk this out because I disagree with you. Okay, but let me we ask probably you, have something. Oh, me, we probably have something different. Let me in ask mind. you. You asked me the question. Does what was the question you asked again? Say it again. Does God love everyone the same? Yes. Brad, do you think God loves everyone the same? I do not. D well, do tell. Well, I think He has a different kind of love for His people. So I think we see that play out in the Bible. I think we see that play out in the Old Testament. That he loves Israel in a different way than he loves the rest of the world. I think we see it in the New Testament. I think Jesus shows that, that he has a love for his people. I mean, he says in his final prayer in John, when he's right before he's going to mm -hmm. go to the cross, he says, I'm praying for my people, not for the world. He has some different kind of love, I think, for his people than he does everyone else. Now, he loves everyone. This is where like our human understanding of love mm -hmm. breaks down a little bit. He loves everyone, but I think it's not the same. So if we're going to, let's just, let's just look at the people of Israel for a minute. Sure. So he decides he's going to make this covenant with the people of Israel yes. and says, I'm going to show you love in a mm -hmm. very specific way. So the people that were not the people of Israel, how did he show them love that was different than how did he show the Israelites love? He did not have a covenant with them. Yes. So he didn't have a covenant. And that would mean to me there was ways he was showing his faithfulness and kindness and his protection and his power to them in a unique kind of way. But it doesn't mean that he didn't love, let's just say, 
the Canaanites. Sure. He yeah. loved them. So I agree. how did he love them? He loved them by sustaining them. He loved them by sending rain. Yep. By gravity, by all these sort of ways yep. he's holding the world together. Um, I think he showed them love by giving them their choices, like a, a sort of consequence, blessing way of living. Okay. Like there's ways that even if you were a Canaanite back then, if you lived a certain way, there were ways God blessed you. If you didn't sure. live certain ways, he didn't. Like if you stole Agreed. from each other, like you were going to get some of the general benefits and blessings and consequences of your decisions. But there was a specific way he showed love to the Israelites. Yes. How? Through his favor, yeah. through his kindness. Well, the fulfillment of the covenant, mm -hmm. the things that he promised he would do. I'm going to give you land. I'm yep. going to multiply you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to increase your blessings so you can bless others. Like he makes good on all those things. So is in that way, when you go back to that question, when you said to me, does, does he, he love, love them people? the same? Yes. There's a difference in how he expresses his love to people. Yeah. And would you say that's true with the church? Yes. There are ways that he shows his love in a different way when you're a part of the family of God. Yes. Again, it's not that he doesn't... We, we started out, he loves everyone. I agree with that. That the way it's expressed or the way he loves people is different. I'm slower than you. So to, I didn't need to work that out to see what you were... What, what did you mean by that? Okay. Yes, within the family of God... There's a unique way that he's showing, expressing love. Just like in your family, mm -hmm. you love your mm -hmm. wife and your children, and you love each of your children, but in all of those cases, you express it differently. Mm -hmm. You express yep. love with your wife one yep. way, even then, even with your sons, it, you, it shows differently, right? Yeah. Yep. So there are ways that we can love and love differently. Those don't have to be like, well, if you love them differently, you don't love them as much. Yes. That's not true. No, it's different. I think that's good. It's like not more or less, it's different. Okay. All that gets us to where we're going. Oh, good. We, again, I'm a little slow. So if God is love, everything that's from God is love. He's all about love all the time. In his very being, he is the definition of love. Yes. So remember the internet's asking the questions on Real oh, Talk these yes, days? Yes. So the question is, if God is all of that loving, does he then approve of every expression of love? No, he is the definition of love. Okay, so then in, shouldn't the argument is made then, if God is all loving, God loves everyone, mm -hmm. then any expression of love should be acceptable by God. No. Tell me why. Because if I use his definition, all expressions of his definition of love are loving. Okay. Right, so even in his definition of love, consequences for our decisions is loving. Okay. Right? So it's like, here's your choice, Israel. Do this, and you'll receive this. Don't do this, and you'll receive that. All of that's under the umbrella of love. Yeah. But as humans, we would perceive that discipline or oh. those consequences as justice or wrath or unkind. Right. But all of his definition of love. So as humans, man, I love a lot of things that are just flat out wrong. Like, okay. I love eating three bags of chips at 10 o'clock at night. Oh. Those are my feelings. Right. I love that. But if I would say that that's got, like, no, just because that's what I feel towards a bag of chips, that doesn't mean that God says that's right or that is love. I don't know. Yeah, this is a common cry of our culture, though, is like, and it's sometimes thrown at mm -hmm. Christians, like, wait, 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 I thought you were all about love, and now yeah. you're standing against things where people are saying, this is my expression of love, and your God is all about love, then how can you speak against something. Yeah, that's it, it, it's fascinating because when we become the center of definitions of what is love or what isn't love, that can change person to person, culture to culture. So what I would submit is there's a design or a, a greatness of love that superintends every culture and every person. It's like at the individual or cultural level. It's like, okay, I mean, to get sort of crazy, it's like, do I get to just... I don't know, say, I want to sleep with a goat. Is God supposed to baptize that love? Right. As, well, if that's, if you love a goat, Joe, right. I mean, I love my dog, but there's a limit to that love. Right. Right? And if I would say, well, no, all my feelings of love towards an animal, I should be able to let those feelings play out in whatever way I individually want, and God should go, 
I am all loving, so enjoy, son. Like, no way! So, a woman did marry a dolphin, by the way. I read about this on the internet. A woman oh married boy. a dolphin. Another woman married herself. Oh, good. Do you know about this? No. That's, she married that's herself. A, yeah, I mean... And then three months later, she, she divorced, divorced herself, herself because she fell in love with someone. <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed, and she's now getting I mean, married. This is, one of, I, this is like, and we're supposed <clears throat> to just say everybody can do whatever they want. I mean, go back to the original question. Is what you said, does God approve every expression of love? And I like what you said is you're like, well, just because we call it love doesn't mean that's actually love. God is the definer of love. So if I go, well, this is what I love, and this is the person I love, and this is the lifestyle I love and the type of love that I want to express, you go, you don't get to call that love, actually. That's what you're saying. Yes, and you, and you, you can feel all kinds of things, but does that feeling, it's like... So that, if it's outside of God's definition of love, mm -hmm. is what I'm feeling actually love? actually love? I mean, it can be warm and fuzzy, but is it actually love? It could be your definition of love. Yeah, but it seems like what you're but saying is it, it's... I, I don't think it's God's definition mm -hmm. of love. And which is, you know, these are all these intersections. We have a choice wow. to say, do we define what love is? Or does God define what love is? And the thing is, we can define what love is. But that definition of love is going to change person to person, culture to culture, generation to generation. If we're okay with that, we can pursue that and choose that. And God's like, go ahead, you can call it whatever you want. But is there something higher, wider, that superintends over that? Mm -hmm. Without God's definition of love, then everybody gets to define love their own way. And your definition of love could cross my definition of love. And who who's wins? I mean, mm -hmm. who's, who's actually right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if a person chooses... To your point, we have we all have things that we love, but actually, even that it's like we think we love, yeah, right. But but you would say that's not. I, I love three bags of Doritos. You said, well, that's it. Feels warm and fuzzy. It feels good, but it's not actually love. Is what you would say? No, I mean, in a lot of ways, isn't that just sort of gluttony? Mm -hmm. Isn't that like taking something good? and making it into something that it's not and taking it to an extreme where it starts to break and cause damage to us mm -hmm. if I follow that feeling, right? And I, I mean, this is such a sticky topic because yeah. so many people, we all have our own definition of what it means for me to feel like you love me, mm -hmm. right? So like, let's take it out of the realm of, how do I know Brad loves me? I, I sort of have love languages and I have perceptions and data points and experiences where when you, show me kindness, I can define whether I believe you love me or not based on my own experiences. But is that accurate? I mean, is that right or wrong? I, I don't know, but it's really interesting because it becomes so individualistic to what I feel is loving. Yeah. Right? I'm raising teenagers. <laughs> Their sense of whether I love them as a parent changes. Yeah. And even in the journey with my guys at their different ages, I, I can see, they can see at different stages when they were 16 or 18, how they experienced my love and thought I hated them and I was totally against them. But then when they get into their twenties, they realize, oh wait, dad, you really did love me. Mm -hmm. But from their experience and in the moment, it didn't feel very loving when I took the car away mm -hmm. or gave them the, you know, the consequences for their decisions that they did. But all of it was love. It just didn't feel very loving in the moment. Yeah, so I want to I want to be sensitive to the person who goes, well, you don't really get to tell me that I'm not feeling loving feelings towards someone. You're right, like, I don't. Yeah. I mean, who does, yeah. right? And I kind of, the way I kind of have learned to think about it is what I feel isn't wrong, but what I do with that feeling can be wrong. Okay. Right? It's like I feel this love towards someone or this experience but then what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. Do I Am I the fi final arbiter of what is right and wrong, love, not love? What our culture is telling us is you. everybody gets to define their own way. Right. The problem with that is if you follow that to its logical conclusion, then everybody gets to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is whatever you want to do, when it runs up against what I want to do, what happens? Yeah, who like, wins? What, what, there's going to be chaos. There's chaos. There's conflict. And, right? 
And like, yeah, who are you to define what love is? Like, I'm not, but I want to go to the Bible and say, what does God say? And let that become our compass. I know that's not popular in our society Yeah, it's not today. popular. <laughs> it's not what the inter- internet wanted to hear. No, they don't want to hear that. And yet, it, I don't know. It, it actually is a pathway to freedom. Yeah. To say, God, what is your definition of love? Because for all of us, we all have to align to one thing. I mean, I think the path to freedom is if we align to God's definition about these things, we actually discover freedom and joy because all of us have our own feelings. Like we're all, it's not like you have different, I don't even know. It's like yeah. we all have to come to some kind of middle where the Lord is the one leading us and it's not us defining what is or isn't right or wrong. If not, there's just chaos in families and churches and communities and countries and culture. So is there anything for someone who's watching who they get into these conversations with people who go, you can't tell me what is and isn't love. Like what, what coaching do you give us then? I mean, I, I take it to its logical conclusion and, yeah. you know, go, go to, you know, if you, okay, follow that out. You know, when I define love this way and you define love that way, what does that actually mean? So you follow it to its logical conclusion and it's just chaos. And it's interesting because nobody wants to draw lines in the sand because they feel like that's the most unloving thing to do. Yeah, line in the because sand. that is where we get like, that's hateful, right? That's where yeah. we get called out on it. But I think some of it is we open up the Bible and we say, what does God say? Yeah. And there's times what God says love is and what love is and not, I don't like. Yeah. But I go to it as my source of sort of true north. And it, it's really hard. I mean, what, what advice do I give people? Try to understand and love and respect each other, even as everyone's on a journey towards what is right and wrong. I don't even know, Brad, because it's a complex topic. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how to help people with it. Except the, if, if there is not a higher moral authority above your feelings yeah. and my feelings, we're all screwed. Right. <laughs> This whole thing's gonna break down anyways at yeah. some point if there's I mean, not. I, 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 I know I know my LGBTQ plus community that like this is such an important topic yep. and I wanna be sensitive to that. Yep. I know that heterosexual, homosexual, transgender, everything is mixed together and confusing and difficult and hard. I know that people have all kinds of confusion and feelings about what love is and love isn't. And it's like, my goodness, if we don't try to respect each other and understand each other, we're gonna just divide even more. But if we don't go to our designer, our creator, and say, what does he say? And what has been true for thousands of years historically? Mm -hmm. And what guidance do we get from there? And when we come to crossroads, I think Jeremiah the prophet says this, when I come to a crossroads, I look to the ancient paths Mm -hmm. and follow the way Mm-hmm. that it leads me. Sometimes in our modern society, with everything up in the air and us following all our feelings in every yeah. which direction, we're ignoring some of the ancient paths mm-hmm. that are going to actually lead us to some sort of peace and joy. So, I mean, as a followers of Jesus, we want to encourage people to respect each other and be yeah. patient with one another and go to the scriptures and say, let that be our compass and anchor. That's the only way we're going to have true, I, I think, a true sense of love and peace with each other and with the Lord. Good. Hard. There's a lot there. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard because we don't want to... This idea of love, again, we so feel it that having to listen to someone else's definition of what it is is really hard, even if that someone else is God. It's hard. Yep. Good. Try not to... Um, well, let's just not talk about VD Day anymore. We're not celebrating VD Day. I. No, I don't think it's good. I think you just Freudian slipped and said celib- celibate. Celebating. <laughs> Celebrate VD Day. Day. It could help with VD Day <laughs> if you remain celibate. See you next time. <laughs>